like all great stories, we have to go back to late 2020. In the greatest live service Star Wars game to ever exist. Fortnite. At this time, there is a deal to spend some money in Fortnite and get two free months of Disney+. Plus. And let's just say, that Master Chief skin, mmm. That was looking like a snack. Well, seeing as Halo Infinite hasn't come out at this time. <laughs> After being burned by the sequel trilogy, Mandalorian Season 2 was concluding soon at this time. And I heard from a few friends that it was pretty good. But I wasn't going to throw Disney any money to watch it. So Halo's Master Chief in Fortnite was my entry to the Mandalorian. So the Mandalorian begins with our guy Mando, as people like to call him. Showing up to a bar in the middle of an arctic planet, arresting a blue alien guy and kicking ass. After this, metal by numbers himself, Brian Posang takes Mando to his ship. But then, hijinks ensue. Then the blue guy snoops around where he shouldn't be snooping and Mando decides to take him in cold. Holy shit. Mando goes to his planet to turn in his recent bounties over to none other than goddamn Dylan. You son of a bitch. He gives Mando a lead to a client with a bounty. He finds out it's for a 50-year-old entity of sorts. <laughs> the client gives him a bar of Beskar, the steel used by the Mandalorian for their armor as a down payment, and he'll receive more when he finishes his job. Mando slaps that new shiny piece of fucking armor on his fucking rustic looking ass and begins to fly to where the target is believed to be located. And he meets Quill and Ugnot, or, you know, one of those guys from the Empire Strikes Back who are fucking around with C-3PO and Chewbacca in Cloud City. Holy fucking dog shit! Blurgs! It's time to buy a Mando riding a Blurg Funko Pop, I guess. <laughs> oh, God, oh no. Oh, God, oh no. Oh, me, oh my, not him. Oh, thank fuck. It's just IG-11. I thought it was a... I thought it was IG-88 again. <laughs> yeah. They eventually find the bounty target, and when realizing it's just a highly marketable cash count, I mean, still a child, a little baby. A baby? A baby Yoda? Cute innocent characters are great for marketing. I'd say you look at Pikachu, for example. But we all know that rat has bodies buried somewhere underneath this house. And we still allow him to run rampant on our hearts and souls. The blood spilled to ink these collectible playing cards. Ever flowing, never ending. The horror, the horror. After a disagreement, Mando takes care of IG-11 in the form of a blaster to the head. As one does and then touch his fingers with our little green friend, closing out our first episode. So yeah, this episode seems pretty cool, right? Well, yeah, it's cool as shit. We get great performances later in the season and beyond from Gina Carano. Wolf Gideon's actor. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Ming-Na Wen and Bill Burr, who unexpectedly and oddly enough probably has the best thing in the entire series thus far in season two. If you know, you know. Oh, and Amy Sedaris, she deserves a shout out as well. If any of that sounds interesting to you, I'd recommend go watch the series for yourself and then come back to this video later. If you don't give a shit, or you already seen the series, then let's continue on <laughs> to the rant. So Mando season one all around is a pretty good time. A self-contained story introducing us to the world of a bounty hunter and his daily life, but then, we get to season two, and oh boy, they've opened up the fucking floodgates. We see Bo-Katan and Ahsoka Tano from the Clone Wars. And of course, Boba the goddamn bet. I was giddy as fuck the first time Boba Fett appeared on screen. As at the time, I hadn't even seen Clone Wars, so I didn't give a fuck about Ahsoka or Bo-Katan. Although she got that booty, though. <laughs> God damn it. And that's season two ending with our Fucking boy, fresh off the tee and back into our arms as our goddamn hero. We deserve Luke, the Skywalking mother, Jedi fucking master, master, 
Master! Master! Rex style character in an MMORPG running through noob dungeons and shitting on everyone. It's fucking awesome. I don't even give a fuck that they deep faked his face on someone else. God fucking damn season two of Mando had some high points for sure. It brought my faith back in Star Wars, admittedly. Grogu goes with Luke? Yeah, it turns out Baby Yoda's name is Grogu. And Mando is off to do more bounty hunting. Moff Gideon is in custody. And in a teaser at the end of the season, Boba Fett took over Jabba the Hutt's old position on Tatooine. What does it mean? The possibilities seem endless with where the story could go. So let's take a ride like a bantha, stride like a bantha, ride like a bantha, right into the book of Boba Fett. The book of Boba Fett feels like an odd focus of three or four or possibly more separate goddamn visions slapped into one show for no goddamn other reason than the fuck over Tamora Morrison and most of the fans of Boba Fett. We get Boba Fett escaping the Sarlacc pit, Boba Fett enslaved by the Tusken Raiders, befriending the Tuscans, and avenging the Tuscans. Boba Fett versus Cad Bang, Boba Fett riding a goddamn Rancor, Boba Fett befriending the misguided cyberpunk youth of Tatooine. Wait, what? Yeah, that, that's not a joke. And to quote the angry video game nerd, what were they thinking? This show is a shitload of fuck, and for some dumb fuck reason, they decide halfway through, Oh fuck, guys. No way Boba Fett can carry a show on his own. Better throw in some episodes of The Mandalorian in there, too. Also, if anyone gave a fuck about the plotline with Luke and Grogu in The Mandalorian Season 3, then fuck you, too, because Grogu makes too much goddamn money, and we need him on screen with Lizzo next season before we can print even more fucking money. You know, honestly, they, they probably did, even though I wouldn't buy that shit after. Shit, fuck that. Who do you think I am, an idiot? I mean, kind of, but you know, whatever, man. Let's just ram a fucking big Mando shaped dildo right up Boba Fett's Boba's ass. The Boba Fett show fucking sucks. And it should have been, at the very least, good. I mean, fuck. How can you fuck up a show about Boba Fett? Even if you would have had him be the new Dymo, turning a new leaf up on the streets of Tatooine. It's still the character Boba Fett. You could have had him doing shit. Instead, he just sits around and lets everyone else do his shit like a fucking cuck. He even gets cucked out of his own show. Fucking man, no cucks our boy. What the fuck? And it just feels rushed and unearned and just kind of dumb. This is where the cracks of the Disney Plus streaming machine started to show for Star Wars for many. Myself included. We're going to skip ahead a bit past Obi-Wan and Andor as far as release dates are concerned and dive straight into Mandalorian Season 3. Which, um, honestly is a damn blur to me. You can honestly sum it up as nothing much has changed since the in the book of Boba Fett. They basically retell the fact that Mandalorian and Grogu are back together and wasting our goddamn time again. Moff Gideon's back. Mando even gets cucked in his own show. But Bo Katan still got that ass, though. <laughs> the only thing that changes in the long scheme of things is that Mando gets the house, Moff Gideon dies after breaking out of a prison bus and causing a ruckus on Mandalore, the dark saber is destroyed, Jack Black and Lizzo are Star Wars canon, and our queen Bo-Katan is something, I guess, I don't know. You know, it's tough being a Star Wars fan during these rough times, but as you can see, for every diamond, there's a big shit sandwich ready to be human centipede straight through Lizzo and into your mouth. You know, Andor and Ahsoka were pretty alright, though. But I'll talk about those in the future when I cover Rogue One and after Andor Season 2 and if they do an Ahsoka Season 2 and I'll throw in the Clone Wars, Rebels, you know, all that shit. The Obi-Wan show just fucking sucks, though. Oh,